Hi, my name is Amanta Scott. I'm a Canadian multidisciplinary artist. Through encaustic paintings, interactive sculpture installations, audio video projects, music, dance, voice, and workshops generating dialogue with diverse communities, I explore the relevance of ancient archetypes, myths, and symbols to urgent critical matters of our time. My work is informed by powerful stories, ancient and contemporary. Inviting visitors to interact with my works and share their experiences, I strive to create meaningful opportunities for people of all ages and cultural backgrounds to show, be seen, heard, listen to others, find healing, and address important social issues through the arts. In this video, I'd like to share with you one of the catalysts that triggered me to create my project Ayu Medusa, an interactive art installation celebrating wise and willful women making a difference in the world today. Prior to the pandemic, I was in Italy, prowling the galleries and museums, discovering amazing artworks, a great many though depicting women in various stages of violation and abuse. And I found myself thinking that these works demanded a response. Looking at Western art over the centuries, I've noticed that it's normal to depict women being raped or abused or belittled as frivolous playthings. Women of color are either hypersexualized, depicted as servants, or notably absent. It seems like typically women are either idealized and objectified, or vilified, victimized, and then blamed. We're seen not as persons, but as subjects, objects, possessions, or a threat. I believe this very negative portrayal of women in the arts has serious implications for our society. This influences the way we see and indeed the way we treat women in society at large. To be sure I wasn't just jumping to conclusions, I began a major research project exploring and categorizing how women are portrayed in art in galleries worldwide. Some of this research is available on the Food for Thought section of my website, amantascott.com. The number of artworks dedicated to rape, such as the rape of Persephone or Daphne or Medusa, or any number of other women, or celebrating voyeurism, such as watching Susanna or Diana or Bathsheba or countless other women in the bath, is truly astounding. Check out the Food for Thought page on my website if you're curious. You'll probably be amazed. Consider that since the outbreak of the global health pandemic, we've seen increased racial tensions, xenophobia, hate speech, and attacks against Asians, Muslims, Black, and Indigenous people worldwide. And all types of violence against women and girls has intensified. The idea that women are merely vessels for sexual desire has enabled enslavement, rape, forced reproduction, and other forms of sexual coercion. As I dug deeper into this issue, I realized I needed to do something to stop this pernicious cycle. I realized I needed to take action. If energy goes where attention is directed, why feed into more of the same? I think it's very important that we find a new way of looking at women in the arts, because it will also impact how we see women in our world today. To address this challenge, I decided to start a new painting series that looked at women in an entirely different way. Rather than retelling or reinterpreting the myths, scriptures, stories, and artworks of the old masters, I realized I needed to change the game entirely. I decided to paint just their faces, recognizable yet abstracted, painted close up so that we can look into the eyes without any distractions. We're not thinking about the body shape or size, the hairstyle or the clothes. We're looking into the eyes and seeing the soul, the mind. In avoiding the things and situations typically used to objectify women and focusing entirely on their faces, I aim to show what remarkable people they are. So, instead of presenting women as victims, I celebrate women as survivors, wise and willful, brave, insightful, patient, determined, strong, fierce, impulsive, compassionate, and kind. I choose to focus on contemporary women so that we can become more aware of the amazing women shaping our world today. 
Each painting has a title and story connected to mythology. Coming from generations of artists and activists and storytellers, I instinctively turn to mythology and the arts for perspectives and answers to life's existential questions. In fact, all my arts projects have been inspired by mythology. Myths are often considered to be sacred tales that explain our place in the world, illustrating core values and key lessons for humanity through recurrent symbols and archetypes. So my use of mythology is to help position these remarkable women in our contemporary world. Conceiving the paintings, I reimagined ancient goddesses as contemporary women because I see women today as drawing down the strength and resilience of these ancient archetypes. I named the project after Medusa because she was raped, torn from her spiritual path, vilified, blamed and destroyed, much as many women have been throughout history. And because the only way to conquer our demons is to reflect upon them, just as the only way to kill Medusa was via a mirror, a tool for personal reflection. For these reasons, I felt that Medusa and many of her contemporaries merited a deeper look. This is what started my project, I and Medusa. As we consider issues such as the portrayal of women in art, our roles in society, and how we ensure resilience in the midst of a pandemic, I think we also have an opportunity to re-examine the role of galleries and museums. With my earlier project, Parallel Lines, featuring a series of encaustic paintings and interactive sculpture installations, I took the work from Toronto to Sault Ste. Marie to Montreal and to Kirkland Lake in Northern Ontario, where I engaged with First Nations people and local residents of all cultures, some of whom had never set foot in a museum or gallery in their lives. Through my installations and workshops, participants found themselves sharing deeply personal stories, finding compassion for total strangers, connecting through an assortment of random objects in a suitcase, and personally identifying with art. As we emerge from the pandemic, I think museums and galleries have an opportunity to become gathering places for people to see art, to consider how it relates to their lives, and to engage in discussions on how we address social issues as a community. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for joining me here today. You can find my work on my website at amantascott.com. Remember, it's Amanta with a T. You can also find my work on YouTube. I look forward to hearing from you.